I don't care what you're facing. God can navigate you through the worst of times. God already knows what you're dealing with, but he's on the ship with you. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Jude. That's easy to find. Find Revelation and turn backwards. Hallelujah. Amen. Jude. And then we go into uh, Luke chapter 10, I believe. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. How many believe that you are a winner today? Say, I am a winner. Say, I'm not a failure. I am successful in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. What makes me successful? What Jesus did. Not what I've done. Now, do it, are there things required of me as a believer? Yes, it is. But Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Hallelujah. Jude, the only chapter of the year is chapter 1. Hallelujah. He says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified, says sanctified. This is what he says to the New Testament church. To them that are what? Sanctified by God the Father and preserved, kept in Jesus the anointed one and called. Say, I've been sanctified. Take that back, brother. I'm going to get through quick, but don't take me that fast. Amen. Let me start again. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified, says sanctified, and preserved in the anointing and call. Say, I've been sanctified, preserved, kept in Christ, the anointed one. And I'm called. Go to the next verse. Mercy unto you and peace and love be what? Multiplied. Now this is how you greet people. You don't walk up to somebody and say, what's up, dog? How, how, we don't realize how degrading that is in the eyes of God to call what he created. See, a dog is not in the image of God. You and I are. You say, Pastor, that's just a slain. Well, some slains need to be cast out. You know, all, all perversion is not in penthouse or playboy. Hallelujah. Yeah, you call somebody a dog and God and create him in his image. Amen. I don't care how you want to play that. That's ungodly. You remember when Elijah was going through the wilderness? Hallelujah. And those little kids started playing, messing with him. He's bald-headed. Amen. A beard. Amen. They made light of him. And the bear came out of the wood and consumed them. I mean, was the kids innocent? That didn't seem like a little innocent thing. But what they didn't realize, they was touching the anointing. In this day, you and I are going to have to be careful about what we touch. You mentioned a little of that this morning. Amen? Praise God. The Bible said, touch not my anointing, neither do my what? Prophets, no harm. I feel sorry for prophets right now because they're catching hell. Many of the, the prophets that I know of prophesied that Donald Trump would win the election. So far, it hadn't happened. Notice I said so far. <laughs> I don't want to go there because I don't want to make none of you mad. Hallelujah. Amen. But I tell you what, hallelujah, amen. The word of God is not bound. Hallelujah. First Chronicles tells us to believe his prophets. But anyway, you know. But anyway, the prophets are having a hard time right now. Because people are calling them all false. But everybody ain't false. Shout hallelujah. Jesus said some things that made him look false, but he was the most real prophet that ever lived. So you can't go with the compliments of the assertions or the mindset of the world because the mindset of the world is often indifferent to God. Shout hallelujah. I stand in a place in my conviction concerning the word of God, particular when it comes to in the political arena. And I don't, I don't, I'm not like some of these preachers that tell you that stay out of politics. You know, the church needs to stay out of it. And you know, when I read the first Kings and second Kings, I found out that the political thing is involved in the house of God. Elijah, and hallelujah, and Ahab contended with each other. That was, that was the government and God. So don't tell me that we ain't got no place in it. The reason it's become so polluted is because we stayed out. 
The reason they got school, uh, prayer out of school is because the church said we need to stay out of politics. We stayed right out. And the devil took prayer out of where? The schoolhouse. And I know people say, what about your house? I agree, but there are some parents that know how to teach their children how to pray. And the schoolhouse was a great thing. Hallelujah. Put my scriptures back up, brother. I told you I'm not going to preach long. Hallelujah. But mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. That's how we greet one another. Paul over, I mean, the scripture also says on one occasion, uh, greet one another with a what? A holy kiss. You know, the lesbian community and the gay community and all that stuff is so perverted now, we're almost afraid to show purity. You know, a man could hug, and the Jewish people, they kiss each other on the jaw. They greet each other and say, Shalom. They know they're not perverted. And the Bible said, to the pure, all things are pure. So the only time it becomes conflicted is when your heart is not quite right. Shout hallelujah. A man hug a woman in the church. Well, you better watch out that man. He got lust in his heart. Now you must have had it because you thought of it. That ain't my message, but let me go on. But we got to learn how in this last day, listen, the only people we really have is the household of faith. Now, I got natural brothers and sisters. I love them and everything. But I don't put them above the household of faith. Your real family is the household of what? Faith. And I'm not telling you don't mistreat your mama, your cousin, none of them. But just know that you've been translated out of darkness into the kingdom of God, dear son. So now you're no longer a child, uh, just a natural brother. Now you're a spiritual brother. And the Bible says, amen, do good unto all men, but especially... The household of what? Faith. Not your mama house, the household of faith. Now, I'm not saying don't do good at your mama house, but I'm just trying to say I got it. I ain't got to spend all that time with that. Amen. You know, it's, people are so sensitive now, you got to explain everything. That means there's a lack of maturity in you. Mature people understand and go right on. When people fight in church all the time, they're immature. If you're in a fight with your brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God all the time, something wrong with you. You ought to be able to come to a place where you, amen, you can love and love in spite of. And go on. Not holding no grudge, not holding no malice. Your heart is free. Hallelujah. So I can't love like that. Sure you can. The love of God is in you. That passes what? All understanding. The height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of the love of God, man, you can't comprehend that in totality. The greater one lives in us. The love of God lives where? In us. So I do love everybody. The mercy and unto you and peace and love be multiplied. The next verse. Beloved, when I, came, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. Notice that it says what? Common salvation. Now you have to really interpret that properly. Because don't make light of your salvation. But it's common in that it's generic. It's for what? Everybody. It's a common, it's, the message is it's not going to be changed in a different country. It works in Turkey. It works in, this, amen, in uh, Argentina. It works in America. works in Spain, in Italy. The same message of salvation will go where? All over. Hallelujah. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly, say that word, earnestly, Contend for the what? Faith. Say that. Contend for the faith. Not any faith, but the faith. Which was once delivered unto whom? The saints. Well, how did the message of faith get delivered to the saints? The gospel of Jesus Christ had to be what? Preached, proclaimed, declared. You and I have heard the what? The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Judas right in the church because he realized we're in the last days. And by the way, we're in the last hours of the church. God gave Adam the earth for six years, for uh, 6,000 years. We're in the sixth day, in the final hours of the sixth day. Because the Bible says on the seventh day he what? Rested. In the seventh hour will come the millennium. But that's another story. Let's just stay with the sixth day. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. Say I'm in the sixth day. In the last hours. Now, make sure since you know that. Do everything you can for God. This is no time to hang back. That's why I'm afraid of some of the pastors. They're wonderful people. They done took a hold of this scientist thing 
and uh, they don't realize their people not being in the house of God. I, you know, let's just be honest. Everybody don't watch my live stream. Very few people do. At first, when they shut us down, a whole lot of folk watched. But now they're watching the other stuff. The HBO, the hell box office, and the sin to the max. Yeah, I said it. Hallelujah. Some of that stuff is so filthy, it's a shame. And you, as again, I say, you don't have to even uh, uh, go to Penthouse or Playboy. You can watch The Simpsons and get perverted. Shout hallelujah. You know, they, 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 made, they made one of them characters a homosexual. And we got our little kids in there watching Bart and all them stuff. You ought, to watch, you ought to care enough about your children to invest in what they let come through their eye gate and their ear gate. Say amen to that. All cartoons are not cartoons. Shout hallelujah. My little grandbaby there, amen, I, I love her. God knows it's hard for me to stand up here and preach when, amen, because I want to, I keep her when I can. Amen. But anyway, uh, uh, this little, uh, you know, she liked bright colors. So I had it in my arm, and I turned it on as this cartoon. It's a pig and something. I don't even know what the name of it is. But what do you call it? Peppa Pig. Oh, she just, I be holding it in my arm, and she'll get to kicking, you know, and, and I don't know, she, they talking. She, I said, would you look at this girl? But I'm on guard what I allow her to see. Right now, she's, a, hey man, it's, a, it's an innocent cartoon, and she's innocent. Guess what? I want to keep her innocent. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Hallelujah. Innocent in the body of Christ now is almost a lost art. Everybody's for Let me leave it alone. I'm sorry. There's a whole lot of fornication going on in the house of God. Say amen to that. Yeah, you, we, we fussing at the homosexuals and lesbians, but we got it going on over here in the heterosexual community. Hallelujah. Well, I passed out in hell as long as I could. The Bible said God will keep whatever you commit unto him against that day. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Let me leave. That's not my message. Hallelujah. But anyway, keep yourself. Keep yourself in this. The Bible said keep yourself. And it tells you how. Where? In the love of God. You keep yourself in the love of God. I don't care how handsome the man is or the woman is. Amen. Amen. You ain't just got to say no. You, amen. You ain't got to do that. Carry yourself so. He know it's no. Before he asks you out, he know it's no. Now, Pastor, I don't care. You got to do something to get these guys now. I'm telling you now, they just ain't going to wait no longer. Now, just be honest. You're in a hurry. The Bible says, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? You can't hang with nobody that clothes and don't burn up. Man, you strike a match, y'all burn it. You started off in Genesis, you end up in Revelation. You know, you start off in the beginning. Y'all get it? But you end up in Revelation. I got to be good. But seriously, see, I've been saved all my life, so I'm, and I'm not here to be uh, uh, condemning. But I'm here to tell you that you don't have to fall because you can stand. And I'm going to tell you something. God is using people that what? Stand. And Paul said, having done what? All. Hallelujah. Now, today we're talking about standing for our faith. Paul said, we do earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And in the body of Christ today, amen, that, and even our, I mean, our television is inundated with unbelief. They're telling us, Dr. Foster, I was getting dressed this morning, and I had turned the channel on. Uh, I listened to this guy out of Louisville that I like, Bob Rogers. But uh, I, I hit the news channel, and the guy said, Dr. Foster, want to cancel Christmas? And I'm like, man, we, we got so many gods now. You know, because we worried about the COVID. Let me tell you something. The winos ain't going to cancel Christmas. Or no other day. The folk that's getting high on, on, on uh, meth. Amen. Marijuana. Heroin. They ain't canceling nothing. They smoking their way right through that thing, man. They're not afraid. Listen, they're talking about breathing on folk. They're giving it, handing it from one person to another. They ain't worried about no mask. 
they have, they're demonstrating more faith than the church has to do that which is what? Wrong. Here we are, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. We say, and we say we got what? Power. Say that word. No, that's too weak. Say it again. Power. Now, if you got power, you got power over who? Over the devil. Luke chapter 10 is, amen, praise God, had nothing by any means shall what? Hurt us. That's in your Bible and mine too. I don't care if you get an amplified version, a message version, King James version, New King James version, paraphrased version, amen. It all says the same. We have what? Power. Jesus came preaching the gospel of what? Power. How do I know it was the gospel of power? Because he went about doing good, healing all manner of what? Sicknesses and diseases. Hallelujah. Say, I need my faith. And when Paul said contend about it, because he knew that about, the scripture goes on to say, uh, there are going to be certain men creep in. Take me to the next verse. I'm going to try to get to Luke. Hallelujah. For there are certain men crept in unaware. Like we, we wasn't aware. I mean, this thing slipped up on us. And by the way, I'm not telling you at all that God sent this COVID-19. This come out of the bowels of hell. Satan himself orchestrated this. Not his imps, not his devils. He did this. But God says, when the enemy come in like a what? Flood. What's going to happen? Spirit of God is going to raise up a what? Spirit of God. Come on, say the Spirit of God. We'll raise up a what? Standard. Well, what is the standard of God? Word of God. The word of the gospel. Say the word of faith is the standard. Not the word of crime. Not the word of intimidation. Not the word of fear. Not the word of worry. Man, some of us have been there. Man, talking about the groundhog day. It ain't got here in January. Folk been in groundhog mode. Hey man, for five months, they ain't seen the shadow of COVID-19 leave. So they still in. And I'm not beating anybody up. I'm saying, when are you coming out of there? Glory to God. When are you coming out of the place of confinement? Because faith doesn't leave you confined. Faith opens you up, my God, to touch the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm not ignorant. I know people are dying from COVID-19. But I also folk know, know folk dying from cancer. <laughs> there are more people dying from cancer than, than there are COVID-19. Why not a plague? It is, but we, we have learned how to navigate what? Around it. He said certain men going to creep in. Hallelujah. Come on, take me back to my verse. Unaware who were before of old ordained for this combination. Listen, the devil set this up before the foundation of the what? The world. He already set this thing up. This is not new to God. Whatever comes in the future that we may break in news, it's old news to God. Say, so getting ready to say something to you. Hallelujah. You know, you think about God, and every believer has what? The anointing. Say, so every believer has it. That means the anointing came where? Out of God. It wasn't like some package he pulled off here and pulled off here. No, no, it came where? Out of God. So when, when you have the anointing, who's in you? God's in me. Not just a gift, but God. I want you to see it in a different light, amen? Sometimes we look at it just as a gift, something rubbed on us. But no, no, something put where? In us. The Bible saying the anointing about it where? In us. So who's in us? God is in us. Greater is he that's where? In us than he that's what? In the world. God wants the church to remember, I have declared unto the uh, church of old the message of faith, and I don't want you to draw back. Yeah. Hebrews said, Brother Lake, we're not like them that draw back unto perdition, but we are them that believe to the saving of the soul. This is not an hour for the church to draw back. This is the hour to say, charge. <laughs> oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Yes. Something is out there. COVID is out there. Other stuff is out there. But how do I get through it? By faith. By faith. Somebody said, by faith. Yes. I know you got your masses, and I think that has some wisdom, I, I suppose. But I have enough sense to know that mass ain't what's keeping nothing, nothing off me. The blood. Somebody say, the blood. That's what's protecting you and I. Glory to God. 
Man, them little demons, them demons see some people say they believe in that mass more than they believe in the blood of Jesus. And demons are, are making light of the church and laughing at the church. Glory to God. But it's time for us to make the devil what? Run! The Bible don't say cast in the devil. It says cast the devil where? Out! You and I have the power to bind the devil. Why? Because we receive the message of what? Faith. We earnestly contend. That means fight for what you've already received. Fight what you've heard. Fight for what you've been walking in. Stop going where? Backwards. Say yes, Lord. Heard a man on the radio this morning out of Shaw broadcast. I said boldly. Amen. Them some scared rascals. I love them, but they're scared to death. Yes. Hallelujah. They were saying that uh, one of the pastors said that his wife cooked dinner for the kids and the grandkids and the great grand, grand, grandkids. She did the whole meal like she normally do. And she packed it up in little boxes and she told them to come by the house and they stuck it out the door and gave it to them. Said, this is the new norm. And I said to myself, the devil is a liar. <laughs> See, listen. We're not to become like the world. I'll give you an example. In Exodus, the Bible says that God told him to go get a lamb. Put blood on that door. Hallelujah. He said, now, and then, amen, uh, eat, the, eat the lamb. But make sure it was unspotted. Make sure it wasn't sick. And at midnight, the Bible said, what? a cry was made. The thing that came to destroy Egypt, Egypt is the thing that freed Israel. Stay with me now. Amen. Listen. Yeah, Israel, I mean, Egypt was in there, what? Crying. Because in every house, there was a child, what? Dead, or uh, firstborn cattle. But in all of the house of Israel, they all was well. Why? Blood was on them. Power in the blood. So there's power in the wonder working power of the what? Blood. You and I got blood on us today. My God. We ought to be shouting all over this place. What we covered in, I'm covered in the blood. Set blood on me. Next time the devil want to want to say something, you say, you better get off me. I got blood on me. Blood. If you think demons don't scream when you cry out to blood, you wrong. Amen. Somebody say, the blood. Demons are running right now because of the power of the blood. One day when I was lost, he died on that cross. And I know it was the blood for me. The blood comes streaming down. See, we never forgot that. Blood comes streaming down. Blood comes streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died on that cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Never said a mumbling word. Let me leave it alone. Never said a mumbling word. Never said a mumbling word for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon that cross. I know it was the blood for me. Tell your neighbor, it was the blood. Say, I know it was. No, it was the blood. No, it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Put my scripture back. Say, it was the blood. Now, my question to the church, turn my music off for a minute. Let me ask them something. Do y'all still believe in the power of the blood? Well, why are you running so? Why are we so scared? Glory! Do you believe blood's on you? Said no weapon formed against this blood shall ever prosper. In every tongue that rise against me, I shall be able to condemn. For this is the heritage of the servant of God. And the blood still speaks. The blood still works. The blood still got power. My God. Hey. Hey. My Sikandalosha. 
So the blood is still running. The blood is still working. The blood is still functioning. My God. Somebody cry. I know it was the blood. Y'all don't believe it, said, I know it was the blood. Take a seat. Let me, let me go with I'm going to tell you what I want to say. Shout hallelujah. Bring that here. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Come here, Brother Tremont. Come here, Brother Jay. Somebody said, power is in the blood. What washed you and cleansed you? Nothing but the what? Blood. Now, the blood, listen, listen. Your sins was far greater than COVID-19. But the blood, what? Washed you. Cleansed you from all unrighteousness. How much more will the blood heal you? The, the blood is a twofold weapon. It's an offensive and defensive weapon. And I'm old Shande. Unroll it. You know, I see. Now, let, about Shande. Yeah, let me, let me have it. You hold the roll. Y'all stand. Yeah. Blanket on your shoulders, so turn this way. Turn that away. And I'm a Shande. Yeah, and I'm a hold it up, brother. Put it on the shelf. Yeah, hallelujah. Uh, brother Lake, would you help me out a minute, bro? You're going to be used in a minute anyway, so you might as well stay up here. <laughs> Put it on your shelf. Now, I want you to hear me. Now, I wanted some Lysol, but this is not Lysol. But it's pretend. This is the off-brand one. Hallelujah. You know, we've been going home and COVID-19, just go through the house. Sanitizing, we call it. Correct. The Lord showed this to me when I was speaking a while ago. He said, tell the people, I said, go home. Put the sanitizing bottle down now. Hallelujah. I know if I tell you that, some of you are not going to do it anyway, but I'm just going to tell you what he told me. Put the sanitizing. No, you know, you go in your bedroom, go in the bedroom, shh, somebody come over your house, ain't been over there, leave. Shh. Because we scared. And I'm not saying be ignorant, but I'm just trying to tell you something. He said, tell the people, I said, go home and sanitize their house with the blood. Go to, your, go, go to your house and, amen, let me see this. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on now, keep the blood on you now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Chris. There you go. He said, we'll keep the blood around. Now listen, if they go home and go in every room in their house and plead the what? I plead the blood. Cover every, every inch in my house in the what? Blood. Now go on out of the house, go to the front door and go walk out in your yard and cover it in the hood. Blood! Go out to the mailbox. Blood! You know, some of you are going to the mailbox, you go in the house, you wash your hands. And I'm not making light. But I want to keep it real. When the devil gets bigger than the blood, then we'll serve him. But he'll never be that. And that's power! Man, I feel like that old Baptist preacher now. Power in the blood. Shout hallelujah. Wonder working power. Where is it? In the blood. So I want you, listen, I want you to go home and use your mouth for something good. And walk in every end of old sea. And one thing about it, you ain't got to keep, now you're welcome to use the blood as often as you want to. But a one-time blood infusion will work. Remember, I said the blood is an offensive weapon and defensive weapon. Shout hallelujah. Now you're going to cast some devils out. Hallelujah. Amen. You let the blood become an uh, offensive weapon. Hallelujah. When you go in and stay in your house and remain there, amen, it makes a what? A defensive weapon. The blood be on my bed. Blood on my faucet. The blood in my shower. Blood all over my house. Everything in my house, I plead the blood on it. Blood on my screen porch. Blood over my grave. Blood over my whatever it is. Go out in the yard. Blood all over my yard. Blood on my mailbox. Now, devil, I plead the blood. Put a blood sign up and say, you cannot trespass. Can you do that? It looks silly, don't it? I say it looks silly. But remember, the Paul said God chooses the foolish thing in this world to confound who? The wise. 
Stop being so smart and let's just be like little children. You tell a little child, I can tell my 